very fortunate uh, to have available these days digital mammography, and this gives us an exquisite recording of the um, transmission of x-rays through the breasts in each, uh, each part of the breast. And uh, from that information, we can uh, compute the uh, uh, volumetric density of the breast by understanding how x-rays are transmitted through breast tissue. So we have to understand the physics uh, and how the transmission depends on the various uh, imaging parameters, kilovoltage and uh, uh, tube current and exposure time, uh, breast uh, compression thickness, etc. And the compression thickness is very important uh, to know. So if we have this information, we can actually compute the transmission um, of radiation through the breast and uh, from that estimate the volume of the breast itself, the volume of the dense tissue, and what we call volumetric breast density, which is just the ratio of those two quantities. There's two important tasks in uh, calculation of breast density. First, we have to uh, identify the breast in the background on the digital image, and then identify the part of the breast that's more or less uniformly compressed. And the scientists at Matakina have developed a technique that they refer to as phase congruency. It's a mathematical approach that's used to identify that region of the breast that is uniformly compressed, and the calculation of breast density is primarily carried out over that uh, region. By relative physics, we're referring to the fact that we pick one region of the mammogram as a reference point. This is a region where the breast is primarily composed of fat. And using this path through the breast as a reference point, we can compare the transmission of x-rays in all other parts of the mammogram to that region. This gives uh, a major advantage in that it makes the uh, density algorithm much less dependent on knowing the exact thickness of the breast at each location. This is one of the most challenging uh, aspects uh, that uh, are encountered by uh, other algorithms. Volpera was validated in several different ways. We have no absolute ground truth for breast density, so we have to compare the measurement of breast density with Volpera to other approaches, one of which was uh, uh, breast MRI. And in breast MRI, we can make images of the fat content and the water content of the breast. Uh, the water content is similar to what we think of as dense tissue in a mammogram. And by comparing on the same women, calculations of volumetric breast density with Volpera uh, to the fat and water content uh, on, on the MRI images, we can get a uh, comparison and a validation of the Volpera technique. We've also uh, done simple assessments of um, volumetric breast density between the uh, craniocaudal view of the breast and the mediolateral view. The uh, breast density really does, shouldn't depend on which view we take the mammogram from. So we look for agreement between the two views and we have excellent uh, results in comparing Volpera between those two views. Similarly, we look at uh, uh, images of the left breast and the right breast. And while we don't expect identical results, we do expect gr a great deal of similarity. So this is another test that we employ. And then finally, we have access to a, a set of research data from breast CT. Uh, breast CT is not generally clinically uh, used, but uh, having uh, this set of images, we were able to compare measurements made using Volpera to those that came from the direct three-dimensional CT data. And again, we got very good uh, comparisons.